Now let's talk about the property, state, process and cycle for a thermodynamic system. Now, what would you need if you have to define the condition of a system? If you have to define the condition of a system, what would you need or what would you what should you do? You need to define certain characteristics of a system. Okay. So those characteristics which define the condition of a system and these characteristics are like pressure, volume, temperature. Okay, so let us say uh, you have a boiler. Let me draw a boiler. This is a boiler. Okay. And you are an engineer which is taking care of this system. Right. Now, this is you. Now, your shift is only till 5 p.m. All right. And these are the various gauges on this boiler. Let us take care of three gauges. So the first gauge, it shows the pressure. The second shows the temperature. And the third shows, let us say, the volume. Okay, you might have different gauges on a boiler, but these are simply you know, there to describe that how do we define the condition or you know, what are these characteristics and how do they define the condition of a system. So this is you. Now comes the time uh, in to leave for your home. Now your friend comes in who has to replace you to take care of this to take care of the system. Now before you leave you will have to define the condition of the system. So you will define that the system is at this much pressure this system is at this much temperature and it contains this much volume. So what you have uh, just done is that you have defined the various characteristics of the system to your friend so that he can take care of the system. So these characteristics which define the condition of a system are called properties. Properties. Okay. And a single characteristic is called the property of a system. Now, let us say you left at 5 p.m. So the value of these properties at this instant of time, that was 5 p.m., is called the state of a system. So now we have defined the state of the system. The state of the system is the value of properties, the value, or you can say the definite value, the definite value of properties at an instant of time at an instant of time. All right. So now if you have to draw, uh, you know, a diagram to describe a thermodynamic system. So, you know, you must have seen this graph very often, you must have seen a pressure axis and a volume axis. So this is one property and this is the second property. And believe and, and mind you, these properties they are macroscopic in nature. So all these properties that I'm talking about are macroscopic properties. All right. So let us say that your system has a state at this point of time. So this is the state at this point of time, because at this state, the value of property P is P1. And let us define this state as one. And the value of property V is V1. So at the condition point 0.1, the property P1, uh, the, the property P has a value P1 and the property V has a value V1. So P1 and V1, or you can say the condition 1, it becomes the state of a system. So this can be defined as the state of a system. All right, because at point one, you have definite values of properties P and V. Now, after state, we need to understand what is a process? What is a process? All right, now, let us say from point one, your system moves to let us say point two. At point two, the property P1 or P would have a state P2 and property V would have a value V2. So now from state one, 
with property p value as p1 and property v value as v1 the system moves to a different state 2 at which the property p would have a value p2 and property v would have a value v2 so this is the second stage state of a system again so now from one state you have moved to the other state so this process is basically called the process so this movement of system from state 1 to state 2 is called a process so if you have to define a process a process is defined as the change of state or you can simply say state change so whenever there is a state change a process is said to have occurred so in this in this diagram you can see the process 1 2 occurs when the the system changes from state 1 to state 2 and the properties also change from p1 v1 to p2 okay so i hope uh, we are clear with these three things that is what is a property what is a state and what is a process okay now let's talk about cycles so if you look at this particular diagram this is the first state this is the second state or you can say this is the initial state this is the initial state all right and this state number two is the final state all right so whenever a process takes place you will have an initial state and a final state okay so what is the difference between a process and a cycle then let's draw a diagram for that and let me again plot a pv diagram for you so this is v and this is p all right so let us start at state one over here and let's go to state two so this is the process one two and then from state two let me come back again to state one so what is happening here is i'm going from initial state to a final state that is one process in this direction and then from this final state i'm going back to my initial state in this in, in this direction so when such a thing happens that is when in a process when in a process the initial state is equal to the final state is equal to the final state then we say that a cycle has just occurred okay so when a process happens that is a change from one state to the other state and then the state is returned then we have the occurrence of a cycle so this is a cycle all right so now we have understood the difference between very important and very important terms for a system that is the state of a system the process that a system undertakes the cycle that a system undertakes and then we talked about the properties of a system right now let's bifurcate the types of properties okay the properties are of two types the properties are of two types the first type of property is intensive property so we have intensive properties and the second kind is we have extensive properties the intensive properties are those properties which are independent of the mass of the system so these are independent these are independent of the mass but extensive properties are dependent on mass these are dependent on mass all right now for example if you talk about the intensive properties then the example would be pressure okay then you have temperature because okay these two properties are not dependent upon the mass of the system right next is extensive properties if we talk about volume 
volume is a property which depends upon the mass of the system then we have energy then we have energy of the system that is also depend upon the mass of the system so if you increase the mass of the system the values of the extensive properties also increase all right now let's finish this video by talking about a very special kind of a property that is called a specific a specific extensive property a specific extensive property now what are these properties a specific extensive properties are extensive properties per unit mass so these are extensive properties extensive properties per unit mass and basically they then become independent of mass so specific extensive properties are often called intensive properties also okay because this property value is only for 1 kg of mass or 1 gram of mass or per unit of mass for example if you talk about specific volume specific volume the specific volume is given by meter cube per kg so no matter whatever your mass is whatever the mass of the system is this will only be defined for 1 kg of the mass so this becomes independent of the mass and is called an intensive property so in a you know in a nutshell you can say specific extensive properties are intensive properties all right so this was all that you had to understand in this video that was on state process cycle and properties in the next video we'll talk about thermodynamic equilibrium